Example one, find the result when 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 22x minus 20 is divided by 3x plus 2. If there is a remainder, express the result in the form q of x plus r of x over b of x. So again, I'm going to draw my box. I know it's always going to have two lines because we're always going to be dividing by two terms. Okay. So again, your first step is to take what you're dividing by, 3x and plus 2, and put them on the outside left of your box. The next step you're going to do is take this 3x cubed and put it inside of the box. All right, I'm going to reverse multiply now. So I'm going to ask myself, 3x times what would get me 3x cubed? Um, I know 3 times 1 is 3, and then how many x's would I need? I would need x squared. So I would have a 1x squared or just an x squared term. Typically, when we're talking about cubics divided by a linear, this is going to be x squared 99% of the time. Now I can find my bottom left box by multiplying. x squared times 2 is a 2x squared. And now comes the difficult part. I want a negative 4x squared in my problem. I have a 2x squared, so I have to force something in the diagonal. So I'm going to ask myself, 2 plus what would get me to this negative 4? Now again, if you're not great at mental math, just do the opposite. So negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So if I put a negative 6 in the diagonal, I know these are going to simplify because 2 minus 6 is negative 4, and that's what I wanted. Once you've got this term, you can now find the top term by reverse multiplying. So what times 3 is negative 6? Negative 2. What times x is x squared? x. Once you have this top middle box, you can find the bottom middle box by reverse multiplying, or sorry, multiplying. Negative 2 times a 2 is a negative 4x. Now, look back at your problem. You want a negative 22x, you have a negative 4. So you have to force something in this box to get a negative 22. If you're not great at mental math, let's ask a question. Negative 4 plus what will get me to negative 22? You can add 4 to both sides. Add 4. So negative 22 plus 4 would be negative 18. So a negative 18 and a negative 4 will add together to get you this 22. Now I can find this top box. What times 3 is negative 18? Negative 6. You don't need an x because you already had an x on the outside. So now find your bottom right box. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. However, look back at your problem. You don't want a negative 12. You want a negative 20. So again, you have to ask yourself a question. Negative 12, what can you put in the diagonal to get you to a negative 20? Again, add 12 to both sides, you would get negative 8. This out here is outside the box because it's your remainder. Okay, so here is your answer. All of this right here. Now, you don't have to write this down, but I'm going to explain why. I had 3x cubed polynomial. I know that is equal to all of this on the top multiplied by the right side. Now, the problem wanted me to divide by 3x plus 2. If I divide everything by 3x plus 2, this is my original problem that it wanted me to find. And then here is my answer, which is just this top part over here. Now, remember with the remainder, you always want to express it over what you're dividing by. So my final answer would be x squared minus 2x minus 6 with a remainder of a negative 8 
over what I was dividing by 3x plus 2. Okay, so again, you don't have to write this top part. I'm just explaining how I'm actually getting my final, final answer. All right, let's do another example. <clears throat> example two. I want to divide these two polynomials. Step one, take what I'm dividing by, put it on the outside. This 3x cubed, your first term, is going to go in the middle. So same first step every single time. All right, first step, find this top right box by reverse multiplying. What times an x would give you 3x cubed? That would be 3x squared. Once you have this term, multiply it by negative 1 to get negative 3x squared. Now, look at your problem. You want a positive x squared, you have a negative 3x squared. So ask yourself a question. Negative 3 plus what will get you to a positive 1? Again, if you don't know, you could add 3 to both sides. 1 plus 3 is 4. So if I put a 4x squared in the diagonal, that would give me to a 1x squared. Um, notice your um, variables will always be the same in the diagonal, very much like multiplying. All right, now I can find this top box. What times an x is a 4x squared? That would be 4x. Now find your bottom right box by multiplying. 4x times a negative 1 is a negative 4x. Look back at your problem. You wanted a negative 4x. You have a negative 4x. So we're done. There is absolutely nothing in the rest of those box. Okay? So this is an example where you don't have a remainder. It divided nice and evenly. So our answer is this top part. 3x squared plus 4x. So again, I'm not going to have a remainder because everything divided nice and evenly. So you won't fill in all your boxes every single time. All right, hopefully you're starting to feel a little bit more confident. Let's do one other one. So go ahead and draw your box. You'll have six boxes to start off with. We'll see if we fill them all out. Step one, take these two terms, put them on the outside. Take this x cubed, put it in the middle first box. Now, I need to ask myself what times an x is x cubed? That would be x squared. Multiply to find this bottom box. x squared times a 4 is a negative 4x squared. So now, let's look at our problem. I've got 3x cubed minus 13x minus 12. I actually am missing something. I don't have an x squared term. So there is a 0x squared term in our problem. And this is where it gets a little tricky. So you want no x squareds, but I have a 4x squared. So I have to put something here that would cancel out my x squareds. So how do I get to a 0? It's going to be the opposite. So if I've got a negative 4x squared to cancel out, I can put a positive 4x squared. That will cancel out to a 0. Now I can find this top middle. What times an x is a 4x squared? That would be 4x. So an x times an x would be x squared. Then I needed a 4. Find your bottom middle by multiplying 4x times a negative 4 to get you a negative 16x. Now again, let's look at our problem. I want a negative 13x. I have a negative 16x. So I'm going to put something in the diagonal that forces a negative 13. Again, if you need some help, ask yourself the question, negative 16 plus what will get you to a negative 13? Do the opposite of adding 16 to both sides. 
16 minus 13 is going to give you that positive 3. Once you've got this, we can now find our final top. What times an x is a 3x? That will be the number 3. And again, multiply 3 by negative 4 to get your bottom right box. Now let's look in our problem. Did I want a negative 12? Yes, I did want a negative 12. So am I going to have a remainder? No. This multiplied nice and evenly. So I don't have a remainder. And so my answer is this top part, x squared plus 4x plus 3. Okay? All right. Let's see. Let's have you guys try one on your own. This one is a little bit tricky. But see if you can try it on your own. So press pause. Get as much done as you can. And then we'll go over it. All right, hopefully we could get that done. I mean, that's the same step every single time. This first number would be an x squared because that would give you x cubed. Multiply to get to x squared. And now comes the hard part. You got to force something in the diagonal. I want a 7x squared and I have a 2. So I'm going to have to ask myself, 2 plus what will give me 7? And that'll be a 5. Once you've got that, ask yourself what times x would be 5x squared. That would be a positive 5x. 5 times a 2 would be a 10x. Look back at our problem. I have a 10x. I want a 4x. So I'm going to have to put something here to go down to 4. Ask yourself 10 plus what is 4. That would be a negative 6. Then ask yourself what times an x is a negative 6x. That would be a negative 6. And again, multiply those two to get negative 12. Now here's the tricky part. You don't want a negative 12 in your problem. There is no number at the end, so that is essentially a 0. So you have to ask yourself, negative 12, what could you put in the diagonal to get you 0? So negative 12 plus a positive 12 will get you 0. So this one does have a remainder. And so my answer was x squared plus 5x minus 6 with the remainder of 12 over your original thing that you were dividing by, x plus 2. All right, one more problem. We are going to figure out if it is a factor. So a polynomial f of x is a factor, x minus k, if and only if, f of k equals 0. That is a fancy way of saying there is no remainder. So our question says, is x minus 4 a factor of this polynomial? So if I divide them and there is no remainder, then it is a factor. So. I've got x minus 4, my first term of 3x cubed. I'm going to run out of time. So press pause and go watch part 3, which is going to be super, super, super short. 